Good day, everyone, and welcome to episode 16 of the Tim Topham TV Piano Teaching Podcast. Uh, welcome to sunny Melbourne. The uh, summer's actually finally coming around the corner, so uh, apologies to all of you guys in America who are listening and uh, just starting to enter the more miserable season. Um, but look, great to have you with me, and I'm sure you'll enjoy today's episode. We're going to be talking to Tony Betros, who is General Manager at ANSCA. Now, this is part one in a series of uh, podcasts that I'm going to be doing about piano exams Um, and I've chosen to do this because piano exams form quite a uh, serious component of the music education in a lot of countries most notably um, Australia certainly uh, England um, some parts of Europe um, New Zealand and Canada And so what I thought it would be useful to do is actually talk to some of the people about the differences in the exam board. So this is part one. We're talking about ANZCA, A-N-Z-C-A. It's the Australian and New Zealand Cultural Arts. And these guys run, as we'll hear in a moment, uh, exams in a number of parts of the world, including Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. Um, So here is my interview with Tony Betros. I do hope you uh, enjoy it. And please, as always, if you have a spare couple of minutes, head to timtopham.com forward slash iTunes. Uh, and the instructions are there for you to leave a review. I really do appreciate it. If you've been listening to a few of these and you're getting a lot out of them, please leave an honest review. I read them all, uh, and it's just fantastic to uh, to not only hear what people are thinking, uh, but also to increase those uh, little rankings that do, do help in the visibility of the podcast online. And finally, make sure you check out the show notes uh, if you're interested in all the links and things that we're talking about. And I know Tony's got a special offer to give you at the end. Uh, head to timtopham.com forward slash episode 16. Thanks so much. Hi again. One thing I forgot to say, if you happen to be in one of the countries where uh, exams aren't so common, um, still have a listen to this because... Uh, a lot of the conversation revolves around piano pedagogy in general and the kind of ways that we should be approaching it. Um, exams form a part of that, and you'll obviously find out about these exam boards. Um, but if you're not in a country that uh, yeah, really uh, has a, an exam culture in music education, then still stay tuned because I think you'll get a lot out of it. Um, and even though a number of these exam boards operate in particular countries, um, in fact, some of them are very international and expanding. So if running or putting your students in for exams is something that interests you but it's not so obvious that, that you could perhaps do that where you live uh, then make sure you check out the, these exam boards uh, some of them are very wide ranging international um, uh, organizations so here it is the interview with tony betros of ansca well welcome tony to the podcast lovely to see you this morning thanks tim yeah good to be here really good Now, uh, Tony is General Manager of ANSCA, which is the Australian and New Zealand Cultural Arts. These guys run uh, one of the other main exam boards in Australia. Uh, And I wanted to get Tony on because he's the General Manager and obviously knows this uh, exam system inside out. So we can ask him every question that hopefully we need to, uh, to try and find out more about how it all works. So just before we get started, Tony, I was just wondering, can you give us a quick brief kind of background about yourself and how you came to be in your position? Yeah, for sure. Um, a piano teacher for 30 years. A bit scary when I write that down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started at ANSCA um, three and a half years ago, but uh, previously I taught at uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar for 13 years at Penbank School in Mornington. You've right. probably not heard of that. but I haven't heard Beautiful little school on nine acres of uh, of land out there. I taught there for seventeen years. I love love the Mornington Peninsula. So for those for those of you not in Melbourne, this is this is kind of premier <laughs> beach wine region. I love it. It's yeah, the wine's really, really great cool. place to live and work. Um, look, I did my associate performance diploma with ANSCA in nineteen eighty four. Uh, did the certificate of teaching at Melbourne. Conservatorium, that was the MIMT course with the May Clifford used to run there. I don't know if you remember that name. Mm-hmm. And then did the public performance exam with ANSCA, the fellowship diploma in 1989. Okay, and all on piano? All on piano, classical piano. Great, yeah. fantastic. So not only have you uh, taught piano, you've taught this exam board to students and you've also gone through it up to the highest level yourself. Yeah, exactly right. Well, I've yes. picked the right man, I think, haven't I? Yeah, you have. <laughs> and 
The other thing uh, is I've been, I was a board director for quite a few years. Right. Um, and Dean gave it away. I had a health issue uh, for 12 months and then they talked me into coming back. Oh, well, I was happy to come back as general manager in uh, 2012, I think. Okay, yeah. great. Fantastic. All right, so let's uh, let's start talking about Ansca, uh, and we'll put a link to Ansca in the show notes, obviously, uh, so people can have a look up online more about it. But what are the main goals of Ansca? Um, the main goals are to offer a recognised system of assessment um, to all musicians, regardless of their chosen instrument, their classical or modern piano. Um, but we were one of the first boards to introduce drum kit exams. We've got a ukulele syllabus. We've got a modern guitar syllabus. Um, Next thing you're going to tell me, you've got a kazoo syllabus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a kazoo. That's, that's in the works still. <laughs> <laughs> but we wanted to offer a system where, where uh, all instruments and all styles of music were, you know, recognised. Yeah. Our other main goal is to offer an encouraging environment to all students, and particularly on exam day. It's a real focus of the board that um, the approach is encouraging to students. Okay. So do, is that how the examiners approach it or is that the actual physical environment? How do you do that? Yeah, it is. It's um, it's the way the examiners um, talk to the students. We, we, you know, they must be greeted by their first name. And, and, you know, there needs to be a few comments to try and make them feel relaxed before, before the exam starts. It's, um, I was going to get into this a bit later, but it's also things like uh, standardising the way general knowledge is asked. We've got a really prescriptive approach now so that students and teachers uh, have a really predictable, um, uh, predictable approach so that yeah, they won't be scared by examiners going, which they can do. They can go off on a bit of a tangent in general knowledge. So, Yeah, I think that's actually, th those kind of standardizations are really, really important because it, it is very difficult for a teacher to prepare a student if you actually don't know how they're going to be asked, asked these kind of questions. So I think yeah, that's, exactly a, that's right. a great benefit, yeah. Yeah, it is. What we've actually done is listed the, the, the questions that the examiner can ask in the syllabus. So there's, there's no surprises, <clears throat> but... Um, you know, at the end of the day, the students still have to learn the same work, but um, they'll know how the question will be asked. The exact wording is listed. Mm, great. Yeah. And so we've talked about a few of the, the differences that perhaps separate your uh, method and how ANSCA works to some of the other exam boards, but are there any other specific other features other than what you've already said that set ANSCA apart? Yeah, there are. There's um, We have a free choice available, Tim, for all instruments uh not all grades from grade one a free choice what is that so that's a free choice piece they can choose any piece from any um from anywhere but it's the teacher's responsibility to ensure the standards correct it can okay. be high can higher than the grade but it can't be lower right um we don't Ask. We don't have teachers sending in their free choice pieces for pre-approval. Uh, they just need to make that decision and it'll be worked out on the day by the examiner. Okay, sure. How many, um, while we're on it, how many pieces are students expected to play for an exam? Well, uh, three pieces up until grade four and then four pieces from grade four on. Okay, and one That's of them in our grade mates. one up can be a free choice piece. Yeah, exactly right. Okay. The other thing that's a little bit different is that backing tracks can be used for two pieces. Okay. Um, from uh, ah, for all grades, sorry. Okay. Now this has become particularly useful since um, we've, we've kind of developed an, an association with Christopher Norton and his American Popular Piano, mm -hmm. and um, we've actually included the whole series as part of the Modern Piano syllabus. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a selection that teachers can make, you know, if they want to, but all the um, support is there with Christopher Norton's series, the American Popular Piano, because we've always struggled with training teachers in, in a beginning improvisation. It's one of the requirements for that syllabus, and the American Popular Piano has turned out to be a really good match for us. So. Great. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let's come back to that one because I think that's a that's a bit of a, an important topic in itself. Um, 
But I was just going to say, I think you've got a number of different types of exams too, and we, we should probably make clear that the improvisation and the Chris and stuff is one type of exam, I think I'm right in saying, and there's classical exams. And Can you just go over the, the different types of exams that you're Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. So we've got, we've got the normal traditional classical piano syllabus, and then we've got the modern piano syllabus. And the modern piano syllabus follows the same structure as the classical, but the genres are obviously modern. Right. Uh, it, it goes through to the same diploma levels that the classical syllabus goes through, but it's treated seriously. It's, it's not um, meant to be an easy alternative. And, in fact, you know, often the styles in modern, you know, the rhythms particularly can be really... Mm. Uh, you know, quite challenging. Yeah. Um, but we also introduced a performance syllabus this year, which um, is an option for those that are perhaps busy um, and they, they're looking for an alternative type exam. It's just the performance of four pieces, Tim. No, yeah. there's no other requirements for that exam. Um, no general knowledge, no nothing. Just no get nothing. up there and perform. Yep. 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 Just four pieces, get up and perform. So... You know, the, the emphasis is on performance. Um, and is that at every grade or just certain grades? No, it's from every grade from one to eight. Okay. And, and also a, a final level called performance diploma. Okay. To, per, to be devil's advocate, uh, could that not be used by teachers as a way to kind of get out of doing some of those things that are harder, the general knowledge and the sight reading, oh, we just won't worry about it, we'll just get you to play music? Yeah, look, it probably – well, I imagine some teachers might do that, but we, we're we encouraging teachers to, to use it in a smart way. I mean, you can you can structure the, the technical work around the keys of the pieces mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and certainly sight reading and general knowledge shouldn't be avoided. Mm. Um, but I think at the end of the day, their performance will – it'll catch up with them by the time they get, they get to the high levels if uh, – they haven't got that technical background, certainly. Mm. Look, I, I, I say that, uh, you know, definitely as devil advocate, it's not my own opinion. I think, I think it's actually a great opportunity um, because it allows teachers to spend their time doing all the other things that they, uh, they should be doing anyway, but they can sort of, instead of just focusing on a strict syllabus of scales, sight reading, general knowledge, oral tests, they can... They've got more time then to talk about chords and progressions and improvising and composing and all that. That's those it. Kind of I mean, good teachers will always be good teachers. So, you know, it's it, it's just horses for courses. It's it's just an option for for kids when they get to those years where they're busy at school to continue their music studies. Mm. You know, like the the old under the old system, they just drop out and that'd be the end of them. At least this is a way teachers can keep them going. Hopefully you know, time comes back to them again and, and they can return to the normal syllabus. Mm. That's yeah. great. Cool. So we've got the classical syllabus, the modern one, the performance syllabus. Yeah. Uh, are there any other options? Yeah, there's a duet syllabus. Okay, that's great. Uh, there's, a, there's a keyboard syllabus, which kind of intermingles with the modern syllabus. The, the keyboard syllabus only goes up to grade four, you know, electronic keyboard, right. and you use all the um, instrumentation options on the keyboard, okay, the rhythm unit and accompaniment and things like that. And, and the duet that one, that's that's right. you're, you're assessed as a pair, I assume? Yeah, that's exactly right. Right. Exactly right. So the report's um, duplicated and, yeah. Yep. And there's a syllabus for that of the pieces? That there's a syllabus for that. Yeah. That's yeah. available for free download online, like all our syllabuses. Fantastic. We'll make sure we link up to the syllabus downloads for sure. Um, I was also going to say, is there, uh, you mentioned that students can choose one of their pieces. Can they compose one of their pieces? Yeah, I'd forgotten to mention that. They can. They can compose one of their pieces. So, okay. yeah. And so uh, that, that, I mean, that must be quite a hard thing for an examiner to judge the level of because obviously if they're performing at a grade six level, I'd, I'd, I'd be pretty happy if, uh, if someone could could compose something at a grade one level or two level even. Oh, right so, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, it does how, how's that judged? Performance standard. It, it needs to be at the, at the standard grade. Yeah, it okay. does. Wow. Okay. So that, that, could, that is actually quite a challenge. Well, yeah, and they need to level. submit a, a score to the examiner as well. So, 
right. Yeah, so it's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> that's not, that's not an easy way out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not really. Probably Fantastic. better. Um, okay, so look, I mean, it sounds like one of the one of the great benefits of what you guys are doing is is that there is a huge variety of exam types to suit. So we're not trying to put everyone in one category and say it's just classical exams and that's it. It's like no, that's exactly right. Yeah, you want to play with a friend, you play with a friend. If you want to do modern music, you do yeah. that. If you want to play a keyboard, do that. Uh, I think that's you know some yeah, great that's features. It. Yeah, whatever the you know whatever the musician decides is their field. We we want to try and support them and encourage them. Mm. So um, in the modern, I'm assuming Christopher Norton's um, APP stuff uh, that actually we interviewed him as you know for yeah. podcast episode uh, two, I think it was. So we'll put a link to that in if you haven't seen that one already. Um, is that part of the modern piano course? Yeah, it's part of the modern piano syllabus. So. Okay. We went through all the uh, books ourselves and decided and graded them, you know, <clears throat> a level five book of Christopher Norton we didn't regard as being all grade five pieces. Some were in grade three, some in four and some in five from memory. Yeah. So we, we've, we've categorised them in each grade. But um, the thing that we like about that course is that there's, there's, there's training in improvisation, which we, we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. You know, Christopher takes them through step by step. There's actually a book, the Etu book, that um, that really um, deals with things in a step by step basis, which uh, teachers should really appreciate. It, it just makes it so much easier. To, mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. And and from for, for anyone li listening who uh, hasn't explored improvising, then the first thing I'd do is just watch that podcast with Christopher because he talks about. Uh, how he goes about doing this. But th those books, they really just start with, uh, he says, you know, improvising can be, you know, one note. Let's that's start it. with one note. Yeah. Let's yeah. play it in a simple rhythm and then let's add a second note. And, and you know, that that's where you, where you start. So for teachers who are freaking out and saying, I can't teach improvising, um, th this is a great, uh, a great method to use, isn't it? Yeah, it is too, because I think the word improvisation, you know, a lot of teachers link it to the great jazz improvisers and <clears throat> that's the kind of concept that, that's in their mind. But like you said, it can be one or two notes and and Christopher just makes it look so easy and approachable. Mm. And I have mm. to say, the uh, I've used APP, uh, the American Popular Piano books before and yeah. the the backing track, the, like they're well-written pieces obviously, but the backing tracks are pretty cool. Like You know, well, you know how when, when they first started bringing out backing tracks with these <clears throat> other books, they were just, I don't know, like midi, Oh, they just sounded terrible, but they, these are all his backing track stuff that he does is very cool. So for sure, you're grooving yeah, along with. Yeah, with, I, I think kids really enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So, what areas do you cover? Where can people be examined? Because uh, well, I've obviously got listeners all over the world. Um, yeah. <clears throat> what amounts are you focused at the moment? Well, we we examine in every state of Australia. Mm -hmm. um, we examine in New Zealand in both islands. And then we're also in Southeast Asia, so that's Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and Thailand. Great. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got representatives in each of those Asian countries, and we've got a representative in New Zealand as well who takes care of local business there. But everything's run out of this office in Diamond Creek. The, the, the plush office <laughs> behind you, the... The walnut like, veneered, everything. <laughs> right on the edge of suburbia. We, we seriously got kangaroos that come up into the car park. Uh, you know, uh, when you moving off the car every night. My US <laughs> viewers are going to love that. What a shame. <laughs> We're just shame we couldn't get a photo of you riding one into work today. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit scary, but... <laughs> um, and how many exam sessions do you offer, or does it depend on the location? It does, but for most... Capital cities, there's three sessions a year, and then for others, there's two, usually at least two sessions a year. Yeah, right. they're May, June, August, September, and October, November. Great, fantastic. And let's just talk about examining at the moment. I just want to talk about two things. Uh, one is the way they're examined. Is it a numerical? Uh, the examiner sits there and just uh, and, and you know marks ten out of ten for this and five out of five and that sort of thing, or is it just a, a letter grade at the end? No, 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 it's a mark for each section. Okay. Uh, and I think teachers appreciate that because they can see exactly where the marks have gone. Yeah. Um, the other thing with marking each section, it kind of ties the hands of the examiner. Like 
And, you know, I've seen reports come in where kids might get, you know, four out of 18 for their scales and then they'll end up getting 14 out of 14 for three of their pieces. So it's just, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So, and it's, so it's very, yeah, it's a very clear way to let teachers know what needs to be improved and how students... That's exactly right. Yeah. And we're really trying, we're really trying to improve our, our report writing in that way because we're saying to examiners now, look, even if you deduct half a mark, you know, teachers want to know why. Mm. You can't, you can't just say great work, 13 out of 14. There must have been some reason why, you know, a mark was lost. So, look, even if it's an uneven bar or something like that, you need to mention it. We need to give the teachers feedback. They want to know what's going on. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it can, it can, I've had that experience. It can be frustrating when a student gets all the best comments. The comments are fantastic. Everything's great and they get a B. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. How does it work? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 frustrating. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's just talk about examiners. Um, how how do you train them to sort of standardise their approach without going into obviously too much detail? But um, how how can you ensure that that's the case as much as you can? Well, the, the first thing we do is we put every new examiner through a training course. That can take anywhere from six months to two years. It depends how quickly they get their assignments back. Um, it's a correspondence course, so that they can work at their own speed. But, you know, often they start, but everyone's busy these days, so it can kind of drag out sometimes be two years. So it's like I, a... Like a uh a written read, reading and writing and watching yeah. videos kind of course. Yeah, that's exactly right. And talking to them and, you know, okay. if, they've got, if they've got trouble with anything, we're here to help them. It's not like a, um, a, you know, we don't want to be critical of them. We want to assist them. Yeah. Um, but then they'll, then, then they'll train with a, an experienced examiner. They'll just sit in. It could be two, three, four times until they, until they feel comfortable. Then they'll be out on their own. Uh, for two years under probation where their reports are checked really closely and there's constant feedback from the office. And then there's ongo ongoing examiner meetings and training, you know, just as an ongoing thing. Yep. Syllabus have changed quite a bit in the last few years, so we do, we do need to make sure that we're doing that. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Um, now, one of the we've kind of already touched on this. One of the things that teachers find a bit of a struggle sometimes is the supplementary exams. So, uh, the general knowledge and oral and all of this kind of stuff. How how does that work? What what do they what do students have to do uh, if as long as they're not doing the performance exam, if they're doing one of the <coughs> yeah. exams, what do they have to do in addition to play their pieces? Okay, so I think classical teachers will be used to the, to the normal thing. So they start reading general knowledge and oral tests. Um, one of the advantages of our oral tests is that there's no singing required by the candidates. So they're all rhythm-based um, and still pitch-based, but you're just answering questions about intervals or, you know, whether a piece finishes on the tonic or the dominant in the low grades, this kind of thing. Okay, yep. Yeah. It can, um, can be great for her. Uh, you know, I teach a lot of uh, teenagers, <laughs> especially boys. Yeah, that's right. So that yeah. can be a, a big advantage. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. Um, and with the modern syllabus, it's sight, you can choose to do sight reading or improvisation. So there's actually an improvisation test, which is kind of there's a there's a melody line with, with chord symbols and you're expected to, you know, in the early grades just accompany that melody by creating your own chords. Right, great. Um, and then as you get into the higher grades, you know, by embellishing the melody and, and adding to it. Oh, see, I mean, you, that just suits, sits so well with some of the things that I, I love helping students do, like reading from lead sheets, I think. Well, anyone, and any, anyone that's been listening to, a while from, to me for a while will know my thoughts on chords and improvising and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's, it's living in, in, in today's world, isn't it? I mean, someone puts a bit of music down in front of you, you've got to be able to do something with it. Yeah, and that's right. Often it's a modern piece. So, yeah, it's, it's useful. It's useful. And is there, are there resources to help teachers uh, with that test? Yeah. That, the, that, that could be a bit, um, a bit scary. No, it is. Uh, it starts at grade two, the, the choice for improvisation, but we've got a book that, that covers every level from grade two right up to diploma. Wow. And pre-grade two, there's a lot of explaining and training and what's expected. And then as it goes on, it's, you know, it's 
it's explaining things as it goes along. Yep. Yeah. And uh, oral tests and general knowledge and scales, technical work, uh, obviously written up in your syllabus, but uh, oh, no, teachers, teachers be expecting similar things to what they would be assuming by those words? Yeah, that's right. There's books for each of those sections um, that, that cover every grade. The technical work covers every grade and the oral test covers every grade. So it's not like you're buying a book every couple of grades or something like that. Mm. Um, we didn't talk about books. The books for the classical syllabus are fully resourced. So there's grade books for every grade from introductory to grade eight. Right. The same for the modern syllabus. So there's books for every grade as well. And how long be be between changeovers of books sort of thing? Uh, like do, do, do the books last for a number of years or are they a new book uh, each year? Yeah, no, they're grade books. Yeah, they're grade books. Great, so. Sorry. So, sorry. Uh, so uh, let's say I'm teaching... A grade one student this year and I've got another one next year does the book change oh no no it hasn't changed for a while, okay. for a while. and we need to we're, you know we're starting to get it onto our agenda now we need to be thinking about the next series but the series has been out for quite a few years more than five years I think okay um, and are there kind of you know lists of pieces other than yeah. what's in the book that you can use yeah yeah there's the manual list of course okay, there is a manual list great yeah and then the free choice means that you can do, because we've moved to a three-year syllabus now, the, the free choice gives the candidates an opportunity to, to play whatever's current. So, Okay. So yeah, by move, what, you said moving to a three-year syllabus. What does that mean? Um, well, it, it's now going from 2015 to 2017. So the syllabus will last for three years. It used to just last for two years, but now okay. it's um, three years. All right, yeah. right. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so I think you've answered this before when you mentioned your own experience. You offer diploma exams as well. Yeah, that's right. And what are the main requirements of those? Are they similar to what other exam boards are doing? Um, they are. There's associate, licentiate, and fellowship diplomas. Right. Um, now, in the, in the not if you like normal syllabus, it's um, associate is four pieces. Although five pieces in modern, so there's four in classical, five in modern. Okay. Don't ask me why that. that's come up. <laughs> have to go back through the archives. Um, and then there's general knowledge with that exam as well. Right. And that's a uh, uh, oral general knowledge, spoken? Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah, okay. it is. But even, you know, we were talking before about general knowledge. We still want to try and make it that the questions are predictable. And we've, I think we've even, we have listed them even in associate level. Okay. Um, but the question might be something like, you know, talk about the form of this piece. Okay, so if we're looking at a bar, prayed and few, we're, we're not expecting a two-word answer from the candidate. We're expecting them to talk about the sections, you know, mm. uh, the keys, the, um, you know, everything to do with form with that piece. Um, we'd rather not prompt them. We'd rather just have them um, talk. Yeah. So... If they, you know, but if the examiners are not getting the answers that they want, they'll prompt. But that, you know, kind of results in a deduction, if you like. Yeah. And that's okay. in the syllabus. We expect we expect them to talk. There's not that many headings, but if they're asked for one, they're expected to be able to talk about it. Mm. Um, licentiate is similar, but you know, with with the high standard pieces, and the fellowship diploma is the public performance. Okay. Yep. The public performance, we always bring in an outside examiner. So la last year we had a um, an improvisation fellowship diploma, would you believe? The first one ever. Wow. So this guy just got up and improvised on the spot. He told us what pieces he was, you know, playing, but apparently, you know, it was all improvised on the spot. Now we had um, Professor Tony Gould as the guest examiner for that. So we always try and look for a, for a real expert in that field. Right. To, to assist with the examining and that you know high you know that's our flagship diploma yeah sure. yeah uh, and what's the, what are the memory requirements at those levels do you know off the top of your head um, yeah I think licentiate it's only one piece um, okay. and fellowship I think we expect memory on every piece okay yeah yeah great yeah cool I uh, was blogging not long ago about memory and my thoughts on that so it's yeah. <laughs> a good question to ask <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so, and uh, what else have I got here? 
Do you? Oh, how how quickly do exam results generally get come out? Okay, that's a good one. Well, the, the golden rule in the office is the day they arrive in the office, they're posted out of the office. So, on the same day. On the same day. And right? they the arrive the next day after the exam today or something. Oh, I cut it. Well, it depends. Yeah, it depends. You know. We expect the examiners to get them in within 24 hours, to have them in the post at least. But the thing we're finding really annoying is Australia Post has really gone. <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, where we used to get praised for getting the results out so quickly, it's kind of like, well, yeah, where are they? And it's out of our hands. We've actually resorted to tracking every item that goes out of the office now. So okay. we, can, we can see them sitting at the mail centre for two or three days. But, yeah. Not much we can know. do about that. I don't know what's going on there. But the other thing is not only are the reports posted, but the certificates are posted at the same time. So Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. And that kind of leads us on to my next question, which is about online uh, enrollment uh, results and syllabuses. Uh, so I know that some exam boards have their syllabuses online. I know you guys do, so that's... Uh, that's one thing we can put a link to. What about, have you thought about online results uh, or enrolment or do you do enrolment online? I don't even know. Timely question, Tim. We, we, <laughs> we actually had our website guru out on Tuesday this week. Right. Because we, we've made the decision that, they, you know, this is the way we need to go now. Um, yeah, so we're, we're, you know, pricing it all up and, um, you know, expect, expect to have... In the pipeline. Yeah, for sure. Is, something that, is that for results or for enrolment? Or both? Well, we, we want to try and do as much as we can online. So, you know, we're imagining a teacher portal where they can see their results and um, enrol their students and, do you know, do everything. Yeah, basically. Yeah. fantastic. Well, it's, it's got to be the, the way, uh, way of the future, I guess. But I, I would imagine that it done properly and linked with your own kind of systems, it could potentially save your office staff a whole lot well, of yeah. as well. Well, that's what Craig, our guy, was saying on Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the other benefit of it. It's, it's good to stay as a small office if we can. Um, so, yeah, that, that'll that really suit us as well. Great. Just less paperwork too, Tim. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, yeah. all, all, all of us teachers are with you on that one. If you could get rid of the paperwork, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> all right, just a couple more questions and we'll wrap it up. Um, one of the hardest things for teachers considering a change of exam board um, is that, you know, they, they've, they might have taught a system for 5, 10, 20, 30 years or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so they're really used to how it all works and everything. So what advice would you give teachers considering a change of system? Um, yeah. You know, are there, are there some pros and cons and, and how should they go about it if they want to just dip their toe in the water? Yeah. Look, the first concern that usually gets raised is, you know, is, is ANSCA recognised? You know, this is a thing that often comes up. Mm. Now, where it's available, ANSCA subjects are uh, you know, approved for inclusion on state and territory education certificates. So we're talking about in Queensland, you can have your music results included uh, as part of the Queensland Certificate of Education. ANSCA is approved for that. In South Australia, the same thing. We're approved by the South Australian Education Department in the Northern Territory in Western Australia. And ANSCA qualifications of grade seven and above are also um, able to be used for Queensland tertiary admissions. So okay. in, all, in all the states where it's relevant, ANSCA has equal recognition as, um, well, you know, I guess our biggest right, um, competitor is the AMEB. Sure. Um, so, you know, that, that's the first concern. Like in New South Wales and Victoria, there is no recognition of, private music um, exams with, say, VCE. So it's not relevant there. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of putting putting teachers at rest to go, it, It's this is a recognised formal exam board that people know about. So, you know, don't don't worry about that aspect. But what, yeah, about, what, what about all that kind of, yeah, oh, I've got to relearn a whole system and all this kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, Look, our, our main focus is on the student. You know, we want the exam experience to be a really positive one for the students. Now, that's for all grades, whether we're talking about beginners or whether we're talking about um, children doing, adults doing their diplomas, you know. How do we do this? Okay, well, we insist the examiners greet students by their first name. 
Um, the board recently introduced a complaints procedure, so any complaints that teachers make are, tr are treated very seriously and and are brought up with the examiner. So, you know, we want teachers to be assured that their students are our first interest. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, you know, like I said before, this thing with general knowledge, trying try to make the exam more predictable for teachers. Um, Another, another advantage of ANSCO, I guess, is the free choice from grade one and above and being able to play your own compositions. Yeah. I don't know whether I'm quite answering what, what you're asking me to. Yeah, well, look, I mean, I think the, the question more specifically is just about, uh, I guess, is it easy for teachers if they have been following another exam board for many years to try out ANSCA? And yeah, how, look, how would they go about it? Look, I think it is. The first thing they could do is go and download a syllabus from the website. So all our syllabuses are, are available for free download. So, you know, they don't need to pay anything. They can have a look. Look, the, the way our normal exams are set up, the classical and the modern syllabus, they're very similar to AMEB. Mm -hmm. um, the standards are very similar. So for um, people listening around the world who might not know, AMEB is the Australian Music Examinations Board. Uh, yeah, they're the ones that have been around for 75 years or whatever. We're the new right. kids on the block. You're the, the new kids, yep. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually, uh, I, I put a, uh, I've had a few students through ANSCO, but I remember the first time I did it, uh, I just I just decided for one of my students who was tending towards the more modern music, yeah. uh, but was interested in doing the exam, I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to give it a go and try it. And yes, I had to do a bit of reading and a bit of research, uh, and I had to try and find. I had to find some new music and explore it. Uh, yeah. But uh, it was actually a great little mini PD session for me in understanding how a different exam system works. Uh, yeah. Finding and teaching new repertoire, which is fantastic, because we all know that it's very easy to stick to the pieces that we know really well and not try the new ones. So that's exactly right. I think, I think that's a huge advantage of actually trying uh, a new exam board. Um, and the other thing is that you know you don't have to change your whole uh, studio over, do you? Yeah, like you can no, just you don't try have it. To. Try yeah, it look, a couple of horses for courses. You might decide you want to. Like you said, if you've got students that are more modern inclined, you know, you might want to give them a go with the ANSCA syllabus. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing with the performance syllabus I forgot to mention is the pieces you can choose from either the classical or the modern in any combination you want. So with that performance oh, syllabus, yes. okay. the yeah. one without the, um, with the, the other requirements, yeah. Okay. So pieces, yeah, you can choose from either syllabus, which gives a much wider variety. Absolutely. Much wider yeah. yeah, yeah, fantastic. Okay, so last couple of questions. Where or what are some of the resources and, and, and websites that you guys have that provide resources for teachers? Yeah. Um, well, with this our website, and that was recently updated just in the last twelve months. So, it's so what's the address of that? That's uh, www.anska.com.au. Great, thank you. Um, so. From the website, we sell our own books. We, we actually produce our own books, Tim, in-house. Okay. Yep. Um, so we've got a big printing room up the back of the, the building here. Oh, literally in the building. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, not all of them, but those ones that have a smaller um, a smaller quality, yeah, we produce them in-house. Yeah. Okay. And, and so the, they can buy, teachers can buy that on online via your website? So if they, yeah. let, let's say you're going to try it out with your grade three student. They can go online, find the grade three syllabus or find the syllabus is free, right? Yeah, they'll get the syllabus free, but they can find the grade three book. They can download that. They'll find the oral test book, the technical workbook. Um, yeah, and it's all completed online so that you know, post it out the same day as soon as we get the, the email. Fantastic. Great. Yeah. And for more information, teachers obviously to the website, uh, if they were to leave questions on the show notes page of this podcast, uh, would you be able to you know, flick them a quick answer if they've got a question? For sure. About it? Yep. Yeah, no worries at all. Oh, that would yeah. be great. Yeah. All right. So you're the, you're, the, you're the guru of ANSCA. What haven't I asked you that I should have asked you? <laughs> <laughs> have I missed anything? Uh, look, we've got the Facebook page, which is proving really popular. Okay, uh, great. <clears throat> What else have we got? We've got YouTube channels which um, uh, demonstrate a lot of our pieces, piano, ukulele, 
Um, <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and other things. I just can't quite remember what they are now. But there's links on our website to the YouTube channels. Okay. Um, uh, I might uh, I might try and get them from you, and I'll, I'll put them in the show notes as well. Perhaps to the YouTube and the Facebook page, so people can link up to that too. Yep, sounds good. Yep. Um, yeah. So I don't know what else should you've asked me. I oh I... no, I think well, I don't know. I think that's pretty good actually. <laughs> I just thought in case there was anything off the, on the top of your head, you're like, oh, I really need to remind everyone of this. Yeah. No, it's been good. It's been really good to chat with you, Tony. Um, you know, we've uh, been in, in touch online for a, a while and I only got to meet you, what was it, this earlier this year, wasn't it? Yeah, was it this year, was oh, it? Yeah, yeah, during one of uh, Chris Norton's uh, tours. So it's great, great to have this conversation and um, I would encourage, you know, encourage other, other teachers. The whole purpose of this series I'm doing on exam boards is to say, hey, you know, there's every student is different and different exam boards and types of exams are going to suit different types of students so we don't have to try and fit square students into round holes and that's, yeah, that's exactly right pick, yeah. pick the the board and the syllabus that suits your students and he's going to give them the best outcome that, that's kind of my uh, approach that should be your approach and look thanks for the opportunity i really it's very much appreciated oh, um, and look if anyone's interested they're welcome to contact me at admin at anster.com um or you'll get that from our website if you can't remember it. But um, we'd like to offer any teachers in Australia and New Zealand a complimentary teacher pack if they're, if they're just trying to, to um, go a bit further. So that includes a hard copy syllabus, which normally retails at $11 and whatever else we can find to send them out here. Great. And how, um, do they, how do they go about getting that? Just contact me at the email address. Send you an email? Okay. Which is yeah. admin, admin at answer.com. Answer. .com. Even though your website's .com.au. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you very much. That's, that's an awesome, uh, awesome little offer for people that want to try and uh, dip their toe in the water and see what it's like. Oh, yeah. One more thing, Tim. We've got a special offer for Tim Topan subscribers. Right. Uh, so when they're at the checkout, if they're purchasing any books, they just need to type TT in the um, bonus box, I think it's called. Yeah, the promotional code box or whatever, yeah. yeah. And they'll get a 20% discount. Ah, on the fantastic. There you go. All right. So we've got two offers now. So yeah. email you for a teacher pack, yeah. admin at ansker.com. That's and, right. And uh, if, if they want to get stuck in and, and buy a couple of resources, use the code TT at checkout uh, on your site. Exactly right. Great. Fantastic. I'm sure I'll remember that one, TT. Yeah, good. And I'll put that in the show notes too, which is excellent. So is there, a, is there a time limit to that offer or is it ongoing for some time? Because obviously uh, we'll, we'll we've made this. it for two weeks, Tim. Okay. I think that's enough. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. fine. So we'll, uh, we'll let people know when that's going to finish up too. Brilliant. All right, good. Tony, thanks so much for your time and uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks, Tim. Really appreciate it. All right. See ya.